Hey everybody, it's James Ferreira from AppMaker University, and today we're going to talk about Google's Project Tracker template and how it can help you get started really quickly in using AppMaker and get you using a great app that you can use in your business today. So let's head on over to the computer and see how it works. Okay, so here we are in the Create New App screen and we find our Project Tracker template right here. It says it's a simple application to track project status across your organization, so let's check it out. Okay, and now here it's loaded up. And you see we have uh, the name up here at the top. It says copy. I'll just leave that there. And we've got some a few data sources over here, some app settings, a project. It looks like we have some projects. And then uh, it looks like a sub table here is going to be the project items and uh, a few other tables for sorting, a couple calculated models for sorting things out. And then uh, the next piece we're going to look at here is we've got a bunch of pages and the dashboard is the page we're looking at now. And then we've got a whole bunch of scripts. That's a lot of scripts, so I'm not sure what all those will do. But let's go ahead and hit the preview and just check this thing out and see what it actually does. Okay, it looks like we're all loaded up. Let's just uh, kind of get the log piece out of the way here. And so we're start off here at the dashboard screen. So let's see what we have here. It looks like Google's already put in some sample data for us. So we've got a project here. It looks like a project. We've got some search. Uh, looks like some filters up here to where we can filter things. Uh, we only have one project, so obviously we're not going to try that out. So we'll make another project here in a minute. We'll try that out. Uh, and some kind of search up here. And then it looks like over here we've got some settings. And oh, this is the email templates. It looks like we can enable notifications here. We got a nice little ho hover over that tells us who's going to get the emails. Um, and we've put some, it looks like Google's using a little bit of the applet technology here um, to do the emails with. I'm not a huge fan of this because it almost looks like you have to kind of write some HTML and know some code to do this. I'm, I'm a bigger fan of the um, having a just the rich text editor to do this and then have the app do that for you. Uh, we, we'll make a video about how to do that too. And then uh, down here we've got the substitution text. So these are the different things that we can actually put into the body or apparently the subject line of our text. And then there's a little button down here that click more and that takes us off to a page that talks about how app script applets work. And the applets are these little uh, question marks here that allow us to inject into the HTML what it is. So there's the template here. So let's just go back. And we've got these nice little um, menus up here on the side that also in, in the menu bar that are contextual to the page we're on. So that's kind of a nice feature. Uh, of course, any of these templates, you know, you can dig into the template and extract these little features out and put them in your own template and that, that makes, or even your own app and that's really cool. Or you can just use them right out of the box. So let's check out what's in a project here. So it looks like it loads up a uh, project, and we've got some status here about the project and a few other things. And if we click the edit pencil, looks like we can go in there and change that. Um, we'll just select slightly off. We can change the date, add some descriptions, things like that. Uh, we'll go back to the project. So there's a little arrow there. And then we've got, it looks like we've got a project status here, which is a nice little kind of drop down that loads up some graphs, some pie charts. It tells us the different status of our items here down here. So let's just go ahead and create another item just for fun. And we'll call this one test. And let's see where, oh, it looks like we can change. So I guess if we, were, if we had more than one project, we could change it to a different project if we we're just creating one here. But it does default, it looks like, to the one we're in. Set the priority uh, high, and then we can change it to, you know, let's maybe change it to a feature. And then we click the add there. And that takes us into the item itself, where we can do some more things here. We can, we'll see some history here. Uh, let's see if we change the status uh, to active here. And then save, it looks like we have to click save if we change these boxes over here. And then we get, and our, our history shows us, looks like it's going to show us the different items that are going on here. We can add some comments, and we can move it to a different project, and we can assign it. And let's see, we can probably use the, oh, you know what? I was kind of expecting to see the, um, the user picker here, but it looks like you would just type in the assignee. 
So a nice little upgrade to that would be to use the, the actual user picker so you can pick them from your domain list. Um, I didn't see the domain was in the data sources, so it's kind of surprising to see that that's not enabled for that. So that'd be, that'd be, that's an easy upgrade. You just drag out a new widget onto there uh, for the user picker, and you can just reassign, re rebind it to the data. Uh, let's go ahead and save this project here, and we'll use this go to project button down here to go back. And there's our new item here in the row. Um, yeah, and it doesn't, when you create it, it looks like the, it sets the owner, but the assignees, you would have to actually type in their email address. That's interesting. Okay, let's take a look at this here. Uh, now our graphs have updated here. So we have one that's in the high, one that's in the medium. So, I mean, it's got two, two projects here. But you can see if you had a lot of items, you could, you could take a look at where, what your breakdown is between the different uh, status, priority, and type. So some useful information there. And this is kind of a nice little roll-up feature. I really like that. A lot. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else can we do here? We can let's go back and create a second project here. Oh, I went back to the edit item. So that actually went back. Um, I was kind of expecting it to go back up to the next project level. Um, let's let's try that one more time here. Yeah, it's going back to the edit item. So that that might be a little bit of a bug there. Um, to check that out. Okay, so we do have a link up here. This is, it does say go dashboard, so we can put that up there. And let's go ahead and create another project so we can try out some of these features. Um, okay, and it sets the owner automatically as me. Status is starts off as undefined. Um, yeah, I think I'd probably like to see that normally default to something else, like on track. Uh, of course, we can set a project due date, and we get the nice picker that comes up here. And you know, since it's slightly, we'll put it for yesterday since it's slightly off track, and we'll just leave the description blank. Okay. Oh, and this is kind of nice. Once it creates it, it sends us directly into the project page, so that we can start immediately adding our items. So, um, and these are. Let's see, these are actually the search boxes here. So it says there's no, no items to display. So that, that's kind of nice because when you have an empty table, this is kind of a neat feature that you can add to your apps. So you take a look at how they did that uh, in the code, but that it, uh, it allows you to just kind of display something else if there's no items in the table, because right now it's just empty and you can't even actually see the table there. So having something to show people that there is indeed something there is nice. Uh, and this, of course, goes back and opens up our page. Um, okay, and so so this is where I was saying you could change it to the other. So we could change it back to sample project we want. Uh, the de default is to be in the, the app at once, but this would allow you to switch items from one project to another, so that's kind of cool. Um, and we'll just say this is part of the process, and it's critical, and then we have an add here. Um, a couple other things that I think would be really cool to see um, would be, let's see, so we don't need to save anything here. Let's just go back to the, to the page here. Something that might be really neat uh, would be to have in the, these critical, maybe show up as a different color for the line, uh, which you can do. Um, we show that, at, I think, in our service uh, desk build. We show how to change the, line, the color of the lines based on one of the criteria. So like if it's critical, maybe turn it red for project items and that sort of thing. Um, okay, and so let's go. Let's just go back to the dashboard here. We're going to try out this search feature up at the top here. Uh, we'll, we'll try out a couple. Oh, here we go. We do have some some status indicators here, so that's kind of nice. So we can see if one's on track and one's slightly off track, and that that kind of is is a nice feature there. Here, of course, we have the drop downs, so we could see. Um, I'm just going to do a resort on our page, so we could go by just the the ones we have, or even a, a date range it looks like here. Uh, so that's kind of nice. That makes it easier if you have a whole bunch of projects going on, you'll be able to find those. And let's try this. So remember we had that edit video. Um, so I'm just going to type in um, edit and see how this search works. See how it does as far as a global search uh, throughout the app? Ah, and look at that. So it did find our edit video project item. So we know what it's an item. Uh, and if, if we click on that, it's going to go right directly into that. So that's actually a really cool feature because you're kind of getting a kind of global search through your projects and items 
Oh, you know, I bet the one other thing um, I did want to see, though, we did have that when we were looking earlier, we saw that there was uh, the template here for doing the emails. So uh, let's just go back and see. I did change the status on one of the emails, so I'm going to switch over to the email. Oh, yep. So here it is. Uh, we've got the email, and it came from no reply, and it says hello, and it has my name here, and it showed the status was changed from new to active, and then it has a little link here to go to the project item. So I can actually click that link and be taken right directly back into that specific item. Yeah, and there's the item we were looking for. So that would allow us to, you know, maybe it's part of our workflow, we're the next person in line and we need to change the status to something else. Um, and we'll change it to resolved here and hit our save button there. And let's see what happens with the history over here. See if it shows each item or if it just shows the latest. Oh, yeah, so there it is. It shows each item uh, as it goes through the steps. So also kind of a workflow tool as well. So I can see a lot of different uses for this. Uh, great app. Uh, hope you guys enjoy it and hope you enjoy the video. Be sure to uh, subscribe to see all of our videos and that also when you subscribe to AMU you also are showing Google that this is a really important product and that you know we want we want to show them that you guys love this stuff. So give us a thumbs up and be sure to check us out at appmakeruniversity.com. Thank you.